You have to gradually raise the age. If you're not willing to do that, nobody wants to do it, but if you're not willing to gradually raise the age, you're not serious about fixing either one of them. Senator, Becky, thank you. Becky, I have a different take on that. You know, one of the realities of Social Security and these other entitlement programs is that it isn't simply money that is going to people when they're elderly. It's money that is going to people based on them being entitled to it based on their financial situation. And of course, that's why it's insolvent because we're bringing a lot of people in this country as well. It's not simply that we've got people living too long or that we've got too many old people. They, they're taking a break. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back in just a moment. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there, and I know this for a fact. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. And why wearing a Hillary for President t-shirt might get you punched in the face. They thought it said Hillary for President. He said, I was seconds away from sending my bar back over here to, to punch you in the face. Since you're wearing a Hillary for prison shirt, you don't have to buy drinks here. Everything's on the house. Hillary's not surging, I tell you that. They're not saying that. They're not saying that. Thank you. Have a Donald Trump endorses Hillary for prison. Get your Hillary for prison 2016 t-shirt at the InfoWars store. And on the back, it says legalize freedom. Show your disapproval of Hillary by buying your t-shirt today. But what she's done is criminal. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Break! Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News live coverage of the GOP third debate. They're going with their closing statements here. Let's join them to uh, hear their closing statement. Health care crisis in America. We have a health crisis. And until we deal with the health of Americans and do what we did with polio when I was a little kid, we eradicated it. You know how much money we spent mm. on polio last year in America? Mm. We didn't <laughs> spend any. We've saved billions of dollars. You want to fix Medicare? Focus on the diseases that are costing us the trillions of dollars, Alzheimer's, diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. Eradicate those, and you fix Medicare, and you fixed America, its economy, and you've made people's lives a heck of a lot better. You know what, though? That's not the, that's not the role of government, mm. to, fix, to, to, to find a cure for all these diseases. They don't do a very good job of that, and he should understand that. The way that Hillary Clinton wants to do, because there'll be major reductions in benefits in the next decade if we do nothing. I have a concrete plan to do just that. 
which allows people to keep HSAs to, to encourage savings. It allows for people that are retiring with Social Security to be able to get a minimum of 125% of the poverty level so that there is a baseline that in this generous country of ours, no one goes below. Governor Bush, uh, Mr. Trump says that he is capable of growing the economy so much that Social Security and Medicare don't have to be touched. Do you want to explain how that's going to happen, Mr. Trump? Yes, it's uh, very simple. We're going to make a really dynamic economy from what we have right now, which is not at all dynamic. We're going to bring jobs back from Japan. We're going to bring jobs back from China. We're going to bring, frankly, jobs back from Mexico, where, as you probably saw, Nabisco is leaving Chicago with one of their biggest plants, and they're moving it to Mexico. We're going to bring jobs and manufacturing back. We're going to cut costs. We're going to save Social Security, and we're going to save Medicare. Governor, you just heard him. You have to reform Social Security, and the simple way to do it is to make sure that the wealthiest don't receive the same benefits as people that are lower income and make sure that you enhance savings in the private market. The idea of 401ks, I have a small business that I set up. It took, it took an arm and a leg to, to be able to set up a 401k. Who's arm and leg? Because of yeah. all the federal <laughs> mandates and federal... sure he's got a small years. business. What is... <laughs> we need to it, it wasn't daddy's leg. It yeah. wasn't brother's. Did he inherit Zapata oil or something uh, the from daddy? Can't. They're just going to grow your way out of this. I have a plan to grow the economy at 4%. But you're going to have to make adjustments for both Medicare and Social Security. Yes, I, I want to tell you, seconds. in my state, we took Medicaid, the hardest program to control, <laughs> and we took it from a 10% growth rate to 2.5% without taking one person off the roll. I thought they were going to be doing their closing statements yeah, because these guys were adamant that they were only going to go for two hours or they weren't going to come to the debate. Well, maybe that's going to be at the end of the set. Yeah, I don't know. CNBC, CNB Kasich? Medicaid from 10 to 2.5%. <laughs> We can take many of those same procedures, we can apply it to Medicare, we can make a stronger program, but I agree with Jeb. You can't just do this by growing the economy, you can't grow your way out of demographics, but we can give people better health care, and finally, on health care, why don't we start treating people, giving incentives for people to keep people healthy <coughs> rather than giving the incentives See, to treat people. Uh, you hear them all this is, is one of the reasons why Senator the Republicans don't have any problem with Obamacare because they want to run your health care system as well, don't they? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they, they are tied in with the insurance companies. Let's see what Rand Paul said. do nothing and it'll just be fixed. That's absurd. And I think people who don't want to fix it really are unwilling to take the chance to say something has to change or missing the boat here. The age will have to gradually rise. There is no question. It's the only way you fix Medicare, the only way you fix Social Security. Yeah, because it was always based on life expectancy. It was always care. a lie. There's Kit, you got anything money. in the Twitter it station? Yeah, I just want to remind everybody that if you want to add to the discussion, you know, don't be a stranger. Uh, tweet us at RealAlexJones using the hashtag GOP debate. And also, if you don't have Twitter, you've uh, got a Facebook account, for example, you can find us on Facebook at Alex Jones. And I got a good tweet here. It says, from the Constitution, it says, I want someone to have cojones in the Fed, IRS, nothing but a scam, Hillary for president 2016, and leave my guns alone. Uh, I, I, I might have missed it, David, but uh, I don't think anyone has really, in the debate has called out Hillary for crimes tonight. Am I correct? I don't know, but I know that guy's tweet could be my next tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds American as hell right there. Well, they, they did talk about how, uh, you know, she was... Uh, Actually, somebody did call her out on Benghazi saying that she blamed it on a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. who, I don't remember who I that can't was, remember either. Yeah, somebody did briefly and got some applause on that. Let's hear what uh, Ben Carson's saying here. Billion dollars, And there are 48 million people involved. 40 million, I keep wanting to laugh every time I, they go to him because it reminds me of that scene uh, from uh, that out, that comes uh, uh, Talladega Nights where the guy doesn't know what to do with his hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can just see him. He looks so uncomfortable. And he keeps, he keeps looking down at his hands like, well, I don't know what to do with these. <laughs> So he, he just keeps fiddling around the whole time. And I can just tell Will Ferrell in my head. And that's really a theme of a lot of the things that I'm talking about. How do we utilize our intellect rather than allowing the government to use its, quote, intellect in order to help us to be able to live healthier and better lives? It was never intended that the government should be in every aspect of our lives. This is a country that is up for and by the people. Thank you, Dr. Carson. Governor? And, and, and I, you know, Ben is absolutely right in saying that what we don't need to do is to send more money to Washington, D.C. to fix this problem. And that's what you'll hear from Hillary Clinton, and I've already heard from her, is that 
send more money in Social Security, send more money in Medicare taxes, send more money for Medicaid, and that's going to solve the problem. What we know is we're living longer. I wish that's there was a, a microphone in here live when we were talking about what we were saying earlier about him. <laughs> <laughs> to reflect that. Oh, Christy. <laughs> to make sure that people understand. It's so if you guys, so there's nothing being important said anyways. Who cares? So I was sitting there saying my back hurts right now watching this guy stand up at his podium because you can tell he's he's leaning. On <laughs> there he is, right there. He's leaning on it. Yeah. He's, look at him. He's bent <laughs> over like just like I can tell he's not able to do it. I mean his health is so bad. And David's like, <laughs> his back is like, what do you think about that table trying to sit there and hold itself up? <laughs> and all I could hear in my head is if Wood could speak, it would be like ah! the whole time. <laughs> Civil. Oh my God! This, this is the and joke. This debate is, anyways. Who cares? Out there, what you saw <laughs> was was a, a parade of "I'll give you this for free, I'll give you that for free." Let me tell you, everybody, when they say they want to give it to you for free, keep your hand on your wallet because they're coming to you to pay for it. And that's why I think these ideas up here are great, and that's what we should have. Have more discussions like this and less gotcha. Senator, you know what, John, I, just if, want if I, you, I want to give I you want 30 to, seconds to, here. Of course, he supports uh, the police point, taking you know, your car for free. Mm -hmm. Oh, he also wants to throw you in jail forever for like a <laughs> small <laughs> nugget of marijuana. Yeah. Right. say that those people have no self-control. Yeah. You want to tell me about self-control? Every time I look at them, I'm laughing about that. And on this issue oh, yeah. of but Medicare in particular, it's important because they're going to demagogue what we're saying here tonight. Everyone up here tonight that's talking about reforms, I think, and I, I know for myself I speak for this, we're all talking about reforms for future generations. Nothing has to change for current beneficiaries. My mother's on Medicare and Social Security. I'm against anything that's bad for my mother. So we're talking about we're talking about reforms for people like me and people like Senator Cruz as he talked about it's the politics Four years of mom. That have a way to <laughs> That's what it is. The thing is, those moms yeah. are going to have to go through all that stuff if you become president. I just want to know what he's going to do to protect apple pie, though. You know, John, well, you know he's going to protect mom. A lot but. of people have jumped in here. I'd like to jump in. A lot of people have jumped in. Here. You should say something like that. Or peach cobbler. Oh, man. That's, that's World War III right there. Oh, yeah, we would go to war. And I agree with what Senator Rubio said. Every election, we talk about this. Every election, we talk about Medicare and Social Security. What is your solution? Happens. I would like to start with a basic. Let us actually go to zero base budgeting so we know where the money is being spent. It's kind of basic. There's a bill sitting in the House that would actually pass and have us go to zero base budgeting so we know where every dime of your money is being spent instead of only talking about how much more we're going to spend year after year after year. My point is this, while there are lots of good ideas, for reform. We have never tackled the basics. And we finally need to tackle the basics to cut this government down to size and hold it accountable. Thank so you. let's start by knowing where your money is being spent. Just, just treat me like an adult. Don't force me to buy into your phony lie of a Social Security uh, situation. Don't steal my money and then dole it out to me like I'm a child on an allowance. I mean, that's just basically just treat me with some respect. Don't take 15% of my income off the top. Government so small that the individual has a chance to thrive and prosper. I think, though, government's too big now. What you're going to see in Washington this week is the establishment Republicans have made an agreement with the president to raise the debt ceiling in an unlimited fashion. No limit to the debt ceiling raise. This is extraordinary. It's extraordinarily wrong. You'll see me on the floor of the Senate tomorrow filibustering this and saying, enough's enough, no more debt. Governor Christie. I want to talk to the folks at home. I want to ask you, are you fed up with how Washington taxes you? Are you fed up with how Washington wastes your money? Is this an infomercial? Are you concerned like <laughs> I am that the debt and deficits of Washington... I'm Chris Christie and I approve this message. America's future? <laughs> I got one more question for you. I'm Chris Christie and I hate this message. Because if you are, you Speaking need to be a who's deadly serious about changing this culture. I'm, I'm, not fed up. Up. I'm not fed up, I'm fed well. I changed it in New Jersey. I'm deadly serious about doing this job the right way. I'm prepared, I'm tested, I'm ready. I'm and fed I up with the fact that the government, uh, government steals people's property without even charging them with a crime. But of course, oh, he approves of that message. Absolutely. Notice no one in there clapped for that. About the need to take mm -hmm. on Washington. The natural next question is who actually has done so? Who actually has stood up not just to Democrats, but to leaders in our own party? When millions of Americans rose up against Obamacare, I was proud to lead that fight. When millions of Americans rose up against amnesty, I was proud to lead that fight. When millions of Americans rose up against Planned Parenthood, I was proud to lead that fight. If people are promising they're going to take on Washington and cronyism, 
You need to look to who has been doing it. In my family, my dad fled oppression in Cuba to come to America. Freedom is personal for me, and I will always keep my word and fight for freedom. Thank you, sir. Mr. Fearing. You know, every election, we hear a lot of talk, 